We're here every Saturday morning right here on News Talk 870. As always, you can contact myself, Lance Kenmore, direct on my cell phone at 396-0577, or visit us on the web at kenmoreteam.com. Once again, I always like to thank John for hosting and everybody here at the station for working to make this happen. John? How you doing? Mixed bag with the weather. Mother Nature can't seem to decide what she wants to do. Yeah, you know, we got spoiled the week before with mm-hmm. all that. I think we even talked about it last week on the show, all that sunshine and sunny afternoons. It was, uh, I think this is a little more typical than what we see sometimes. So, yeah, I, I don't like, I mean, I like what the rain does for us, but I don't like uh, dripping that into houses. And as always, we have our expert in-house lender here, Mr. Tom Coyne from Umqua. Tom, how are you? You know, I am fantastic, and uh, I'm okay with the rain. I like getting the, the grasses going and everything gets cleaned up, but... Uh, yeah, everything's great. Business is good. We're keeping busy and cooking right along. Good. That's what we like to see. I know as far as a yard perspective and curb appeal, I started seeing all of those grasses get cut off and the new grass coming mm-hmm. up and tulips poking through there. So, yeah, we're going to definitely be increasing curb appeal there for sure. Well, as we start the show, we always like to start off with a uh, local news story and then our crazy national story. But... On the local news story this week, I, I, I tell you what, I, th- I think we have an expert in here about the news story, and um, I brought in our own Mr. Tom Coyne at Umqua. Tom, I saw that there was, um, for the last three or four weeks, maybe even like two months, I'd been driving by Steptoe on the way to our office, and right after the McDonald's there on Steptoe and Gage, um, there was a big brick wall and a couple months ago a car had gone through that wall and there had been a big gaping hole in the back of somebody's yard it was on the right side you can't it was more like a year and a half ago okay i i just thought it was a couple months so if it was that long ago crazy Mm -hmm. um and i noticed in the newspaper this week that's getting fixed we saw some people out there working on it and then as i read the article and went through it said um that you yourself tom and umqua were involved in that so yeah, how did that transpire? You guys are fixing that wall for that homeowner um, that needed some help. Awesome story. Yeah, you know, it, it was a, it was something really cool that kind of came to me, and it was on Facebook, actually. A gal I know had uh, started a GoFundMe project for this gal, and uh, basically it's a single mom. She's taking care of kids, and an underinsured motorist went through the fence, and she didn't have... She, she, they didn't pay her to get the fence replaced, and she didn't have the money to do it, so it sat like that, and it's been... I want to say it was like 500 days. I mean, it was some crazy number that that hole's been in that fence. And uh, so I, I went ahead and donated on this GoFundMe project, but then I shared it on my Facebook page to all my friends, and I was thinking, geez, with everyone out here, surely someone's going to step up and can help out with this. And sure enough, uh, a realtor that you know, Barry Long. Yeah, Barry Long over at Everstar, stepping up and kind of helping organize everything. Yeah. And he a guy that's done organized. a little bit of radio here with us <laughs> over the years. I've worked with him a lot in radio. Yeah, so, absolutely. So nice guy. You know, he, he reached out to a, a builder that he works with, Cliff Thorne Construction. And uh, Cliff agreed to do it at cost. And so uh, Everstar and Umqua and Cliff Thorne. And we even got, uh, you know, an inspector that you know very well, Ron Shank at National Property Inspections. He stepped up. And so all, all the four organizations are all chipping in and helping get that, that fence replaced for that gal. You know, I got to say, it's absolutely fantastic. And in, in fact, it was a great learning moment. My son even mentioned it a week or two ago. He's like, Dad, do you know what's going on with that wall? And I was like, I don't. And uh, that article came out and him and I read that in the paper and talked about people we do business with and home inspectors and our lender on the radio show and other radio personalities we know. I really just a proud moment for us in the industry and thanks for you guys stepping up and taking care of that i mean that's uh not only does that really mean a lot to that homeowner who i understand it was an underinsured motorist and the insurance company wouldn't pay the full amount to get the wall fixed and she couldn't afford to fix it the rest of the way so not only was she dealing with that but really it's a beautification thing you've Mm -hmm. done for thousands of cars that drive by that every day so you know really helping our community thanks tom and umqua for doing that and that was my local real estate story well, for th- this Lance, week thank you for that appreciate yeah it's it. awesome i i couldn't have been happier when i saw that good you know, good real estate story i think it's one of those things that i think a lot of people out there want to help but they just don't know where do you go help at and and really i'm gonna put it on barry because you know i donated some money to it 
But then he just took it to the next level and said, you know what, let's just go get this fixed. So yeah. uh, really awesome that, you know, if you see something that need, someone that needs some help, you know, do, go the extra step and, and try to help them, and it, it sure makes you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely And hopefully a fantastic. prickly conscience for the other folks that uh, yeah. didn't step up and mm-hmm. say, hey, we can we can make sure this is taken care of. Abs- absolutely. I'm just saying. I couldn't agree more. Just saying. Ab- absolutely. Now for our crazy real estate story on the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, we have Jackie Collins Estate. And if you don't know in um, Hollywood, Jackie Collins... Um, was the author of some, we'll say, steamy type of uh, romance books over the years. Um, 20, 20 or 30 books, the the article I said that she had written. It sounds like um, that that might not have been too bad of a business to be in because her estate that's being sold is a eight-bedroom, 15-bathroom, I surely would not want to be cleaning that many <laughs> bathrooms. Um, Imagine the hot, hot, hard water stains on all those toilets. Oh, no doubt, please, thirty please. million dollar uh. property that's 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 being sold. It's twenty one thousand square feet. When I first saw the pictures, I mean, it's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I literally thought um, it was a hotel or a winery. I mean, this place was just out of control. And it's always fun. Every now and then, I like to mention um, that if we um, put that on a thirty year mortgage, Tom with um, current rates, we'd be looking at roughly a monthly payment of around $107,000 a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so crazy. It's all, it's always wow. fun to kind of uh, crazy. Look, look at some of these properties and what's, and what's going on. I don't think very many people find, you know how many those. of those little, you know, those little blue discs that you put in the toilet tank, you'd be, you'd be buying those <laughs> by the wheelbarrow. You'd be buying those by the wheelbarrow. Just buckets sure. of pumice stones laying around the house. <laughs> yes, yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah, that was, that was a fun one to check out. Out. Thank you to um, Zillow.com and Porchlight who prov- who provided that listing. That was definitely a great one to, to take a look at. So Tom and I were talking, and we've kind of hit on quite a few topics recently about being prepared to sell in the spring market. That spring market coming a little soon, and so him and I talked, and we were before the show this week. We were kind of going over different ideas. And we said, "What are some of the things that um, are going on in this market that we might not have seen in the past um, that makes a good topic for the show?" and one of the things that has changed drastically in the last year and a half, and that is dealing with what we call the home sale contingency. So a lot of times um, in, the, in the past couple of years, we've talked about advantages and disadvantages for people making a contingent offer and what that means to a seller in different markets. So just to go over the basics, one of the things that a lot of times a fear that people have and that they're trying to avoid when they're buying is a couple things that happen in a hot market. Number one is they're looking at, I really don't want to make a mistake and get caught making um, two house payments, owning two houses at the same time. So how, how can I avoid that and mitigate some of my risk? The other problem that we run into is a lot of times people will say, well, gosh, I've heard it's a hot market. We have a lower inventory. If we continue, what if we do sell my house? How am I going to be able to replace it? Like, what are you going to find me um, in this market? I'm going to have the same problem everybody who's buying my house has. So how are we going to deal with that? So one of the things I wanted to... Um, bring up and talk about is making offers contingent upon selling your existing house. And a lot of times it makes sense, especially in a market that we're in, that if you're going to, if you have a $200,000 house and you're going to buy a $350,000 house and you're going to upgrade many times to be able to afford that second house, you need to have your first house sold. And so you're going through this whole process, you know, chicken before the egg, cart before the horse there of what's going on. How are we going to do this and and make that happen? Because I don't want to get my house sold and then have nowhere to go. So many times we put together what's called a buyer's sale of property contingency addendum. And so what this is, is this is a contingency that we add to your offer that makes your offer contingent upon selling your current home. 
Now, there's a lot that goes into that, and there's a lot of factors to think about. From a buyer's perspective, um, really, it gives you a lot of options of jumping out of having that risk type that risk type scenario. Because now, if you don't get your house sold, you're not obligated to go through with the current ha- with the current purchase. However, the risk on the other side of the scenario is maybe I don't get the house I really want. Maybe it is a tight market and that if someone else comes along, um, I get bumped out of my position and I don't get the house I really want. So then a lot of people ask, ask me, the next question is, well, if we have a valid contract with that contingency, what do you mean bumped out of position? How is that even contractual then at that point? So what happens is our addendums are built with what's called a clause, property remains on the market clause. And what this means is this allows the seller to accept the offer. So they say you offer $330,000 on a $330,000 house, full price offer, contingent upon selling yours. So the seller says the language in our contract says, I accept your offer, but I'm going to keep my current property on the market in a contingent status. What, um, until I've received notice that you, Mr. Buyer, has sold your house. So then what you do is the seller then shall give notice to buyer what's called a bump period. They shall give the buyer a certain number of days that they have to remove their contingency. So if the seller receives a second offer, they come, they come in, they accept that second offer contingent upon the first offer going away. They're then required to give you notice and say, you have two days to sell your current house, satisfy your contingency, or waive your contingency and agree to proceed on buying my house without selling your current house. So that sets up a number of scenarios and choices there that, that a seller and a buyer have to make. So I say what's, what's changed about our market is if you would have asked me a year and a half or two years ago, when properties were staying on the market 90 days, there were less buyers out there. We had closer to a five and a half to six month inventory. Um, and you said, hey, should we take a contingent offer? You're coming up um, with some issues because a year and a half or two years ago, their buyers would have five, six, seven different choices, a lot of homes to look at, normal inventory market. A lot of times as a seller, you would say, you know what, maybe I'm not going to take that contingent offer. Because if a buyer has five or six or seven other homes to look at, why are they going to get their hopes up on my house if my buyer can waive their contingency? Maybe my buyer has the money and hasn't disclosed it yet, and they can waive their contingency. So why would I get my hopes up looking at a house like that if this other buyer can weigh a contingency, I don't think I'm going to take a contingent offer. Now, fast forward to today. You're sitting down with the seller. Um, it's the first or second day that you're on the market. You get a full price offer, exactly what you wanted, but it's contingent. So now you're looking at the market and saying, hey, there is no other homes like mine on the market. We're at the top end of the pricing, but there's no other homes like mine on the market. Um, I could accept this contingent offer, know that no matter what, I've potentially got a deal, and the likelihood with there being low inventory that a buyer is still going to risk looking at my house has increased, I would say, seven, eight, nine, tenfold, to where now a buyer will say, you know what, it's worth it. I can't find anything. Let's go look at those contingent properties, and I'll risk bumping somebody else out. So as a seller, you might be more apt in this market to look at a contingent offer when a year and a half, two years ago, you might not because it would lower the amount of traffic coming through your house. So the market shift has also changed perspective that sellers and buyers should be evaluating contingent offers. Should I make an offer on a home contingent upon selling my current house? Do I have to sell my current house? Will sellers in this market even look at those type of offers? So we've been going through a little bit about what that means to make your purchase contingent upon selling your other house, talking about some of those strategies. Um, It's kind of a double-edged sword. We have a market where now if a seller is selling a $400,000 house, I mean, statistically in Tri-Cities, it's harder to sell a $400,000 house than it is right now to sell a $200,000 house. So as a seller, 
if you get an offer, or if you're selling your four hundred thousand, you get an offer contingent upon somebody selling their two hundred thousand dollar house. The way the market is right now, price right, good area, good location. It's almost as good as having a non-contingent offer because you can. We just did one last week, which was kind of kind of prompted this show topic. Is where we're like, you know what? That house priced at two hundred and twenty thousand dollars, Mister Buyer. I think you're right. You are going to sell that in three days. So three days from now, no problem. We'll take your contingent offer because we think that's going to happen. So. After we talk to Tom about financing issues that go along with these type of purchases, we'll come back and wrap up with a few more scenarios. But I'm going to turn it over to Tom at Umqua and some of the financing concerns that people should be looking at when they're going into these scenarios. Yeah, so it, it's a great scenario when a client has a contingent offer and maybe their current house is already under contract. They go and find another one. It's contingent on their house sale closing. And everything works out great because we close the sale of your house and the new purchase on the exact same day. All those proceeds that you get from the sale of your house get automatically applied right over to your new loan. Maybe you don't use all of them. You get some of them back. The escrow get, cuts you a check for the difference. But it all happens really seamlessly, and we're, we're used to that uh, scenario. We do that a lot. But let's say you're wanting to write an offer, and uh, we were talking about you know if you're going to write a contingency, but maybe you uh, want to not have a sale contingency for whatever reason, or maybe you're going to keep your current house and purchase a new one. So that's what I figured I'd chat with you about today. And the first thing we always have to look at is debt to income. So if you're going to purchase a new home before your current one is sold, you first off have to qualify with both the house payments. Most mortgages won't allow you to go above 45% debt to income. Now, debt to income is essentially all of your monthly payments uh, that would show up on a credit report, including your prospective mortgage payment on the new house, divided by your gross income. Now, debt to income doesn't include, the, say, cell phone or utilities or TV service, things of that nature, but just all the items that are going to be on, on your credit report. So as long as that number is below 45% debt to income, uh, generally you've, you've cleared the first hurdle in qualifying for both. Now, Fannie Mae used to have all these rules with uh, departing residences and how many months reserves you have to have. And they've just recently did away with all those. So reserves don't really come into play anymore as far as having to show money in the bank, which is really nice. Uh, But you still have to qualify with both house payments. Now, let's say you're going to purchase the new home and then sell your current one uh, down the road, maybe a, a two months after you're into the new house because you just want time to move into the new home and get that other house cleared out. You don't want people coming to see your home while you're still living there. One thing that we do quite often is we'll allow the clients to put the minimum down on the new home purchase, which is say, let's say 5% down. They put 5% down on the new house. And then after they sell their current home, they have this big chunk of money and they want to apply that towards their loan and they want to see their payment change as a result of that. We'll allow what's called a recast of the payment. Now, generally, when you put a large chunk of money down towards principal, all you're going to do is jump yourself ahead in the amortization schedule, but you're not going to see your payment come down. A recast will recalculate the monthly payments based off of the balance at that time, so it's still paid off in the same amount of time. So if six months have gone by in a 30-year loan, you have 29 and a half years left, you put this chunk of money down, the new payment will be recalculated based off of 29 and a half years. So you're going to see your payment drop. So it's a really nice feature for somebody who wants to buy a new house and sell their other one current, their current one after the fact, but they still want that benefit of that lower monthly payment once they apply all that extra principal down. The only other way to do this would be to refinance. And then you have new interest rates at that time. Maybe they've gone up. And then, of course, all the closing costs again. So really, by allowing the recast option, you're accomplishing what a refinance would be, but no fee. No, I yep. mean, you're saving the majority of all the fees. Yeah, and I think the last time I checked, don't quote me on this, but I think it was right at $300 to do that. Where, which is way better than four or $5,000 yeah, in closing. Exactly, exactly. You hit it right on the head. Not only that, but we all kind of have a feeling that rates should go up. You know, Hopefully they do. Uh, because I think that would show we're kind of stabilizing the economy. It's great for business with low rates. But um, if if rates are up and you do the recast, you keep your current interest rate, where if you refinance, you have to refinance in a new loan. And what if rates are higher at that time? Now, let's say at the time when you've paid that extra money down, you're now at a point where you're below 80% of the original sales price or value. So now you don't have to have mortgage insurance anymore. If you're within four months of when we received the original appraisal, we're just going to go right off that appraisal amount and drop your mortgage insurance for you. If four months have gone by, though, after you're, you've gotten the original appraisal 
you do have to get a new appraisal. So it's a misconception that once you pay it down to 78% of the original sales price, that mortgage insurance will automatically drop off. That's not the case. Fannie Mae says that your mortgage insurance will not drop off automatically until a date you're scheduled to hit 78%. So that scheduled is really that key word there. So if you pay extra, it's not going to drop off automatically. Uh, but if you get there and you, let's say you put the large chunk of money down, you know you have that 22% equity, you just have to pay for an appraisal. So one downside there if you're f- over four months have gone by. Now, let's say you want to convert your current home to a rental and use that rental income to help you qualify for the next house. You can do that as well. All we have to do now, we used to have to document 30% equity in that property. Don't have to do that any longer. Now all you have to do is get a copy of the lease agreement and security deposit. Make sure you receive that in your account. And then we can use that rental income from your departing residence to help you qualify for the new home. And Tom, I mean, you forgot an important part about that. Now that there is Kenmore Team Property Management, perfect. They, you, we could help you take care of that at the same time of working on the purchase. Yeah, absolutely. I, Lance, I'm sorry I neglected to throw that in there. I'm a little disappointed <laughs> over here. <laughs> so the Kenmore Team Property Management will definitely help make that transition easier for you. So we just went through a lot of different scenarios, and. Everyone has a different situation, and there's no one-size-fits-all. So if you want to chat about your situation, what's going to make this transition as easy as possible for you and your family? I'd love to talk to you. Tom, thanks for that information. That's some good, good stuff. I took a, I wrote down a couple points while you were going through that because it really translates to my side of things. And one of the things that you had said that I wrote down um, to talk about on my side is you said getting qualified with both payments. Mm-hmm. So going ahead and saying, there's nothing to say that you cannot write a contingent offer, even if you don't have to be contingent. There, there's nothing that says you can you can or can't do that. So let's say you go ahead, um, meaning that in an ideal world, you want to get your household. You want to have that safety net of getting your household. So you, you write a contingent offer. You find the home you want to move to. You write a contingent offer that says that you have a five-day bump. If they get another offer, they have to give you five days to get rid of, um, get your home sold or waive your contingencies. So what you can do is you can go ahead, write that contingent offer, and then if you decide, if push comes to shove, you if your house wasn't quite sold yet, you were comfortable, you'd still go ahead and buy the other one. You can go to Tom and get qualified for that purchase Um, So that if you get bumped, you are ready to waive your contingency. Now, the only thing that if you're going into that scenario, you really need to make sure that you go ahead and let your agent know that's what you're planning. Most people that write contingent offers wait to do their home inspection on the place they're buying until their property has gone under contract. But if you know you're going to waive your contingency ahead of time, you're going to want to go ahead and get that inspection done. Because what happens is if you get a bump notice and the seller pushes you saying, I have another offer, you need to either sell your home or waive your contingencies. What most people don't realize is there is a clause in that in that addendum called waiver by buyer. And it says buyer also waives all other conditions in this agreement, including financing or any other contingency. So what that means is if you get in a bump position and you waive that contingency instead of satisfying it by selling your house, you now have put your earnest money almost, I mean, at 100% risk. I mean, there's some other legal issues we'd have to have an attorney talk to us about. But What that's saying is you've now waived all your contingencies, including financing. So if you decide to go that step, you're going to want to have talked to Tom and be very, very clear that you can continue and close in 30 days because now you're contractually obligated to do that and you have zero other contingencies in that in that transaction. So most people don't realize um, that that clause is in there. I mean, it's just one of those, you know, small sentences amidst, amongst another paragraph. Um, but so you have to know if you're planning on potentially doing that, you need to be ready. So you'd want to have your home inspection done now. Um, you put that other four or $500 at risk with the home inspection. But much better that you know that ahead of time 
than accepting a major deficiency that you didn't know about. So it's important to make sure that not only are you pre-qualified with Tom to handle both payments so that you can close, but you've also satisfied the other conditions on the property. Well, Lance, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times people will come in and say, you know what, I, I want to purchase this new house at the same time my current one sells. But let's look at it worst case if I have to waive that contingency and I purchase the new one before my current one sells. And depending on timing of closing, let's say you close April 10th. You're not going to have a fa- payment May 1st. That first payment's going to be June 1st. And so you're almost like 50 days out. Well, that gives you a lot of time to get your current home sold before you have to make two payments. Absolutely. And so we have some options. And the other big option that we're evaluating with our buyers right now is how quickly will a home generally sell in your price point? We had had this scenario that we went through with a buyer. We had made an offer on a house. We were in a very, very competitive situation where there were three other offers. Our buyer had a house to sell, but she really, really wanted to get this other house. So we went through some options with her. And there's risk. Risk increases with these other options. One of the options we had with her is we said, hey, I tell you what we can do. We can write an extended close. Instead of doing a 35 to 40-day close, we can write a 90-day close. And we can make that offer. She said, basically, she said to us, what is it going to take for me to get this house without selling my other one? We can write the offer non-contingent, meaning we're writing the offer that we're going to close in 90 days and we're not being contingent upon selling your current house. Um, And so one of the things that she's doing is increasing risk for possible earnest money, um, but at the same time, betting that in that price range, could that house sell? We went over the statistics very, very carefully. We said if you price your house at or just below market, you're likely to get 10 to 20 showings in the first three to four days, Um, receive an offer, get your house under contract, and move forward. That's exactly what happened. But there's a lot of analysis that goes into that process, neighborhood, condition, stats on how quickly they're selling. So there are some things you can do to become non-contingent um, based upon still getting your property sold. So those are just conversations that we have to go through based upon how badly you want your new house, what are the chances of your current house selling, and how we can navigate it. It is a very different market right now than it was even one year ago. Going into the spring like this, we're in new territory. I Two weeks ago, I thought we were going to see the inventory increase a little bit um, because more houses were coming on the market in the spring. I was absolutely incorrect. We had finally peaked back over 600, and I thought spring market, okay, everybody's putting the houses on the market. Unfortunately, the sales increased faster than those new homes came on the market. We've now dropped back down below 600 and we're back at like 570 homes on the market which is a ridiculous number for you know march for the first radio show in march that we should have so we're really really having to dig into these situations to help our clients um, and really working hard to put these deals together if you have any questions about those strategies the risk the different things we can do i know there's frustrated buyers out there in the market that haven't been able to find what they want to find We have been working, crafting, masterminding, getting our team together, and we have some new strategies, some amazing different avenues to go to make sure that you are not super frustrated and you can find something to buy. Please go to our website, KenmoreTeam.com, if you're in that situation. Shoot us a message. Just put frustrated buyer. Can't find anything on the subject line. <laughs> we, we flag it. We'll take care of it. We'll get it to some of our buyer agent experts and try to get with you and help fix that situation. On the financing side, Tom, I know you have that amazing website. How do they get to you to be pre-qualified? TomCoinHomeLoans.com. There's a little apply now button on there. If you 